Hi, I'm Parker Kelly. Welcome to Home Life and Style. <laughs> I am passionate about design, food, and travel. I love discovering new places, meeting new people, and sharing who they are, how they live, and what they love. In each episode, I'll introduce you to a new destination through the eyes of the people who call it home. Join me as we celebrate these towns, these people, these homes in style. Today I'm on my way to the Gold Coast of Connecticut, to Fairfield, a large and affluent town between the cities of Bridgeport and Stamford. Fairfield has a population of about 60,000 and has something for everyone. Five miles of shoreline on Long Island Sound, five beaches, lakes, two universities, several parks, great schools, rural farms, forests, many restaurants, and all 50 miles, less than an hour to New York City. I'm on my way to meet Pinar and Reiner in their stunning, exceedingly well-planned and executed four-bedroom, 5,000-square-foot contemporary sculptural home. The home is set in a cul-de-sac in a traditional New England neighborhood filled with shingle style and ranch homes. This home is by far a standout. Reiner, who designed the home, is an accomplished commercial architect who runs his own firm out of Stamford. Pinar is a physician for internal medicine and pediatrics. She works in New Haven and is also an assistant professor at Yale Hospital. Fairfield is centrally located for them both. Reiner is originally from southern Germany and Pinar is from Turkey and lived in Germany and Istanbul. The couple who met in Vienna, Austria, through a group of friends, has two children, Yasmin, 18, and Bora, 16. They have lived in the home two and a half years and could not be happier. You made it. Oh, Ryan, finally, so nice to meet <laughs> nice you. Nice to meet you. And I know you're Huggers, Pinar. Oh, I know you're Huggers because welcome. Is that a clipped right here? Yes. Is that mosaics? Yes. Oh my goodness, that is stunning. Okay. Walking in there, that is crazy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I'm so glad to finally be here. It's oh, it's so nice, nice to meet meeting you. Too. Well, I'm glad you found the house. Yeah, I know. It looks like every other one. Oh yeah, it looks just the same as all the others <laughs> in the neighborhood. Oh my goodness, it stands out like crazy. Wow. Oh, so you collect art, I can see already. Wow. Your art like, lovers. Collect some paintings. Oh. <laughs> some paintings. Um, <laughs> Pinot's grandma. No, it's not. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's a tease. Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> wow, look at that chandelier. Wow, look at that. That is great. It's beautiful. Rich. Okay, and what do we call this room? Well, wow, um, this is living room. We just want one big open area. Yeah. So it's. Oh, look at that ceiling. Oh, I love everything the Everything is in one big space. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Yeah, we. Uh, that is quite a wall of a wall of glass. That is beautiful. Oh, and the fireplace is beautiful. Oh, so yeah. so more bling here with this chandelier over the. Oh, it's nice. Just like the one in the entry. Mm. This is sparkly. Right, right. It's and sparkly. nice juxtaposed with this. These clean lines and yeah. this is beautiful. So, so now, if somebody you know fast. made this is gorgeous. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's Italian, but it's it's all we try to keep it all white and walnut as far as we could. Yeah, it's right. beautiful. This is, oh, I can't wait to cook in this kitchen with the chef. Oh, oh yes. Wow. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Let me get on this side and look. Sure. Beautiful. That's and country. is this induction? Yes. I love it's, induction. Uh, Do you love yeah. it, the yes. induction? Yeah, we had gas before, and gas is great for cooking. Yeah. It really is, but this is actually better. I like this better. So. And so a little passageway right around. Yeah, this is oh, just the center photos. element there. I always, French scene. Yeah, mm. I always like to look in people's homes and I, I, I often see a theme, like an overall an overall thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's like undulating sculptures or whether it's um, moody, like paintings that have a lot of like mood imbued to, in them. Mm -hmm. You know, like that first one in the balcony and then this one sort of looking just... You're watching somebody else it's, watching somebody. So it's yeah, so nicer watching. than if they stare right at it sometimes. Right, the same with the woman on the balcony, right? Uh -huh. Not yeah. your grandmother. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's looking out. <laughs> You're watching somebody looking at something. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Oh, I'm going to look for that motif as we go through. So this is 
going all the way up. Three, three oh, that's stars. beautiful. Oh, look at that. And there's a reason that these stairs, they, they wrap up. I also just I try to make it sculptural again. Mm. And um, there is also, when we open a window on top, we want to get some natural ventilation. It's called stack effect, so it acts like a chimney. Okay, you first? Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is the... The bedrooms, bedroom, right? bedrooms, bedrooms and level. office. Okay, bedrooms and office. Yeah, so this is the private level, and then on one higher we have one for entertaining a little bit. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the kids' rooms are on this side, as I mentioned. Can we, can we peek at some of them? Yes, sure. Okay. Please, go. Which They're both you? not here. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Please, oh. <laughs> Shh, no one will know. <laughs> so this is our daughter's room. Huskies. We, yeah, she, she's just first year. We just dropped her off a few weeks ago. Oh, you did? Yeah, it's already gone. So she wants, she likes bright colors, white stuff. So the bathroom is all white and everything is white here. Oh, and so grays. she had some she influence in the design of this? Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And how old was she at the time? A couple of years ago, right? So 16? 16. 15, yeah. Mm -hmm. Bora's room, son. So he ah. likes dark colors, so everything is dark gray, okay. blacks, you know, like a box. So light and dark. Right. It's not pink and blue, she and but he, it's, yes. it's like lion. But it gets dark. that. Yeah. And the lion, is he uh, Is he a Leo? No, I, I don't know. I don't know what he is. <laughs> no, he's not a Leo. <laughs> he just thought it's it was a, beautiful. Uh, and yes. It, it, it's, it's, it's a sound It is idea. beautiful, it does. It's our little bridge. Yep, cross, cross that bridge entrance. when we come to it, as they say. Okay, so it's the master bedroom. And we both have our closets, a big one for Pernar, small one for yes, me. Yes, as it should be. As it should be. <laughs> and uh, we have a deck too, again, that's used for the yeah. guest suite below for the shading. Oh, okay. Oh, so the guest, the guest suite is below it's here? It's below, yes. below here, Oh, yes, yes, you can call down, tell them. Yeah. Okay, Stop. knock it off down okay. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's very nice. Oh, look at this this space up here. Oh, this is cool. This is your entertaining space. Yeah, kind of uh, hanging out. Wow. Uh, I really feel I really feel your uh, your culture here. This is, yes. yes. So I really wanted to have one room that was decorated in a Turkish way. Oh yeah, look at that light fixture. Wow, that one's cool. Wow. I mean, that's what's what? struggle for me to yes? allow a fixture like this. I, right? But. <laughs> It's a, it's a Turkish. It's like a helix, a DNA strand. <laughs> Just think of it that way. Maybe you'll like it better, right? And then we have our roof. There's. Oh, look and at the view out here. Wow. Above the treetops. Really. I mean, it's cool. Okay, can you, can so, you say what? First yeah, say it. Pronounce it. It's called Freude, Schöner, Götterfunken, Diesen Kuss der ganzen Welt. And that. Uh, that's two, two phrases from a poem from a German poet, Schiller. And Beethoven used it as the, uh, put music around it for his Ninth Symphony. So the end chorale of the Ninth Symphony has these texts in it. And it's about um, how um, joy is this beautiful spark of the gods. And um, this kiss belongs to the entire world or is for the entire world. I'm a, I'm a little, little <laughs> bit of a romantic, deep down, if you dig down far enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. He's an artist. And an artist, right. That's his artistic way. Yeah. Well, it's been a long process, so, you know, yeah. I do feel... And not afraid to try new things. Always learning. Constant, lifelong learners. Which the chef is like that, too. Always, yeah? always Good. incorporating. Always yeah. learning. So I think you'll... It's going to be a nice match. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah. So should we change it up and go for our sure, walk? Sure. Let's go. Yes. All right. Good. After the home tour, we headed down to one of their neighborhood beaches. Panar's name means water spring, and she feels a special affinity to the water. And it's no coincidence they live near the ocean and the lakes. They love their lake community and association with 500 homes and private lakes. Yeah, so uh, this is this is the main beach. It's beach one, but this, this lake has like... Uh, Five beaches. Ours Named is the one out behind us. Yeah, it just <laughs> came up with keeps numbers. it simple. Is it, yeah. Does it go clockwise or uh, counterclockwise, or did they say one know. over here? And... No, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we just have to know. There's, there's even one missing. So gorgeous day today, but in the summertime, is it? Is it yeah. have a lot of people? Or? Oh, a lot, lot of 
families with kids. I mean, because yeah. the water is very shallow and, and they have to have a lifeguard here and everything. They have a swim team. And, oh. and they, they, <laughs> yeah, they have swim lessons. It's really nice. Our kids were both taking lessons here. They were on the swim team. So it's nice. It's a nice community, actually. Nice. Beautiful. Well, perfect day for it. Yeah. I am looking forward to the dinner party. I am oh, looking yeah. forward to meeting your friends. Yeah. Yes. Well, I'm looking forward to having the chef in that beautiful kitchen. We work up some appetite. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is not quite the long walk for walk, working up an appetite, but you know my appetite doesn't seem to ever need ramping up anyway. <laughs> the next morning, I met Chef David Snyder, the chef who would be cooking for the dinner party. I met him at his restaurant, Brickwalk Tavern. So so nice to be here. Yeah, great to have you. <laughs> Brickwalk Tavern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell me about this whole area, the the Brickwalk neighborhood. So it's a, a big community center. There's nine eateries, a bunch of retail shops, uh, kind of center town of Fairfield. I'm not actually from here, but I moved up here. My partner lives about five minutes away, and uh, we just decided to open up over here. And so what made you decide to do the restaurant together? Well, I've been a career chef, and he's kind of followed my career, and he's an avid foodie and wine uh, connoisseur. He just eventually came to me, we spoke about it, and the last five years, we got serious about it. So one of the things I noticed was a pancake. There's a specific pancake that had some ingredients. It was ricotta. Lemon ricotta pancakes, lemon which is kind of a trendy thing right now. Oh, yeah. And so speaking of trends, I mean, you've been doing uh, what, a couple decades mm -hmm. of uh, being in the restaurant sure. the industry. And, um, and so you see trends come and go. So mm -hmm. how do you approach trends without losing you know, the root of who you are, which is inventive and... You know. It's funny. I've, I've, my style has not changed over the years. I mean, it's I stick true to who I am. And that's the way I got cooking for my soul. So even in an upscale manner, there's something still very approachable about my cuisine. Um, you know, grassroots cooking, the way my grandmother cooks, the way I cook, the way I've learned under great chefs over through the 80s and 90s, and just kind of stuck with me. And I really fell in love with what I was doing. I've stuck true to who I am throughout my whole career. Yeah, that's beautiful. And so you know, when you get people who love your restaurant, they're loving you too. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so tell me about your um, your tribute wall okay. and the way that you think about um, the people who've influenced you and your family and even yeah. the chefs. I mean, paying homage mm -hmm. to, to chefs that you respect. Tell me so about there's that. actually two rooms, both the chef's room and the tribute wall. So we were, Ted and I were talking about a much smaller operation when we were thinking about going somewhere and we wanted to call it tribute. And it was important to me because I really mm -hmm. wanted to pay respect definitely to mentors, but more so mm -hmm. to family and friends, people that have helped shape not only our careers, but our lives, to right. get to this point, mm -hmm. to the people that were in the fabric of our, you know, developing into the people that we've become. And mm -hmm. but when we, we came to this spot, the place was a little too large and we didn't love the name for this space. Mm -hmm. um, so we decided to do a tribute wall, which has got pictures of a generational look of our family, since it was important to us to have our families on the wall. Oh, beautiful. So nice to Go chat with you. It. Cheers. So happy for your success. Glad to have you here. Thank you. And, uh, and can't wait to be in the kitchen with you. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. After our chat, Chef David spoiled me with culinary delights from his kitchen. Everything smells so good. <laughs> and this is, uh, it's one of these uh, yep. classics. It's, uh, everybody's got a version of Bang Bang Shrimp or Firecracker Shrimp. These are our chili garlic crispy shrimp with micro cilantro, shaved radishes, and a little bit of scallions. Fantastic, so. Oh my goodness. I think the salad could use a little black pepper. The polenta breadcrumbs. Polenta croutons. I mean croutons. Mm -hmm. Oh. Right? Mm. Creaminess, mm. low crust, low creamy, with the lemon truffle, with the cranberry, sweet, all that stuff, it all works together. Symphony. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so again, with the creaminess of the polenta, the cranberries, mm -hmm. the lemon truffle vinaigrette, kind of all works together. Yes, layers. Layers of flavor, Cheers layers of texture. Cheers to layers. Cheers, cheers layers. Fabulous, love it. You remember Chef David Snyder? Oh my goodness. I am still thinking about that meal at the restaurant. I'm glad you enjoyed it. At the Brick Walk Tavern. Oh my goodness, that was delightful. I'm so happy to be in their kitchen. It's a fantastic place they have here. Is this amazing? It's amazing. Yeah, lovely. Okay, so we're, are we going to plate it? Is this what we're going to do? We just have to, to slice the scallop first, and okay. then we're going to assemble the whole dish. Okay, so to the cutting board? Yep. Okay, so these are the smoked scallops. Mm -hmm. So like any kind of crudo or sashimi, you want thin slices. It doesn't have to be paper thin, but we definitely want to get a nice, thin, round medallion. Okay, so that's the knife skills. That's you, Chef. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna cut it, we don't want it to fall apart. Okay. And we're just gonna place it on the cutting board and we'll eventually transfer it back to our bowl. Okay, okay. so here we have our sliced smoked scallops. Yeah. I think I'll plate half the dish and let you plate the other half. Okay, and so uh, you cut it into eight? About eight pieces, yeah. so. And so is that where you're gonna sort of? Well, everything's gonna just work itself to the... together, but you also want that 
little bit of that frame, that white frame. After everything else right. goes on there, there's gonna be a lot of stuff on the plate. You wanna see the frame of the plate, so. Like a mat on a painting. Exactly, so okay. you see that they're not lined up perfectly, yes. so you do the last four here. Here's our dehydrated garlic, so we wanna sprinkle a little bit again, not to overpower the scalp, but to give mm -hmm. a little bit of that earthy garlic flavor and texture. So here we have a little bit of winter sliced truffles, and we're gonna take a little bit of that and just kind of place one small piece of you, big, get a big piece, you can always tear it. Right. But we take little pieces, because again, truffle's a little pungent as well. Yeah, there's something so particular about the smell you of truffle. You talk about umami and earthy and, yes. you know, they say it's an aphrodisiac, so it's it's a little bit fun for everybody. Yeah, I didn't hear that part. Oh yeah. Can we try it? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cheers. Cheers. The creaminess of the scallop, the smoke, but there's flavors interplaying and they just bounce all over your mouth. Everything's there, but the scallop still comes through. Well said. Now you had one of mine and I had one of yours. How was the... I think the other ones were a little better. <laughs> you tell me that. I set you up for that one. <laughs> so. As we got about our business cooking, the guests started to arrive. Hello, I'm Parker. Nice to meet you. Oh, can I do this too? <laughs> sure. <laughs> nice to meet you. Can you feel the energy? I can. I, I feel, mean, feel the heat a little bit also. But the gas coming? Sure. And a little bit elevated in here. You can feel it. So what are, what are we doing now? So second course? Second course. This is going to be the second course of the dinner party. We have raised oxtail. Right now we're reducing it a little bit in raised its own juice. So oxtail. oxtail. I think it's a little afraid of what oxtail is. It's beef. It's raised beef. We have a little bit of a... Interesting spices, a little straw anise, a little cinnamon, a little bit of allspice, so it's subtle, but it's there. We're gonna do this with a little bit of toasted Parisian gnocchi. These are Parisian gnocchi here. Okay. We have a little bit of crispy celery root, a little bit of microgreens. We're gonna use this to mold that on the dish. So we wanna pour these in. Now we're gonna let them work and get a little flavor and a little color. We want them to crisp up, have that dichotomy of crispy outside to soften up. So now the oxtail, the sauce is reducing nicely. Okay. I wanna leave some of the juice behind, but we're gonna grab some of the meat. We're gonna put it in this little mold. Right. We're just gonna flip it down, center it there, and we're gonna pour the rest of the sauce around. All right, just all around you. Some of it's gonna seep out anyway. Like a beautifully rich, flavorful moat. Beautiful. Wow. That and we're looks also good. keeping the heat on there right now as okay. we spoon our gnocchi around the dish. Okay. So you have mm -hmm. all that beautiful sauce with these gnocchi. Oh yeah, that must absorb beautifully. So at this point, we're yeah. gonna lift this up. Okay. Ooh. And we're gonna finish this whole dish with a little bit of microgreens, a little bit of the Tuscan olive oil, and I also have some celery? crispy celery root. Mm -hmm. Put a little of micros oh, on there. Oh, look at that. And we're gonna take a touch of our Tuscan olive oil. And, just and this little, on the top for? Just a little bit of flavor. It looks beautiful in the sauce. Yes, it does. There you go. Yes, it does. Gorgeous. Woo! So one more dish. One more dish. This is one. dessert. We kept it simple. And so what do we have? So we have panna cotta, which is basically cooked cream is what they call it. Fresh vanilla beans. We're gonna put a little of black mission figs. Again, I love a little bit of our sea salts to go in the figs. I think it'll pair well. We've got some beautiful ground roasted pistachio and some honey. Beautiful. Now you made this already. We made the panna cotta. We, uh, we, uh, it's, it's an un you basically warm the cream, but then it's gelatin that holds it all together. So you put it in some kind of mold, which we do, and you can see that we're gonna unmold this. Okay. Straight down. All right. So we're gonna shingle the figs. Okay. We're gonna take a little bit of our texture. Now those are raw figs. Those, those aren't are roasted figs. or anything else or grilled or they're just... Little salts, okay. sea salt on the figs themselves. Mm -hmm. To go with the sweet is mm -hmm. a little bit of uh, salt. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And then we're gonna take a little bit of honey to get, accentuate some of the sweetness. And we're just gonna kind of do a little zigzag. Definitely wanna hit over the figs. A little drizzle. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. Oh, salty. Mm. Salty, sweet. Oh, And again, nutty. with mm. the buttermilk in the custard, mm. it's not just all sweet. Mm. So. Oh, wow. Nutty. Texture. Try the, uh, try the custard by itself. Amazing. All right, I'm having one more bite. Please do. Then I have dinner, you know, so. Mm. As Chef David and his team continued their magic in Reiner and Pinar's gorgeous kitchen, I headed up to the penthouse to mingle with the guests. Pinar and Reiner have known these friends for years, and most of them during Pinar's medical residency. They are quite an international group, coming from Italy, India, Hungary, France, Germany, Turkey. Wow. I was just told that Chef Dave um, is serving dinner, so we should all go downstairs. That sounds like a good idea. 
Okay. I think really what says it all is when you walk toward the home and you see Klimt and you see the kiss, what it really says is that Reiner and Pinar embrace life with a passion, just like Chef David Snyder approaches his work as an artist. This is a show about passion and artistry. This is Home Life and Style from Fairfield, Connecticut. Until next week, I'm Parker Kelly. Cheers! Cheers! Cheers. <laughs>